What is intelligence? Intelligence is the word we ascribe to a computational system, such as an animal's nervous system or a piece of hardware or software, and the actions carried out by these systems. Until very recently, evolution was the only creator of intelligence, and so we see what intelligence really is. It's a problem-solving tool for species. In this video series, I'll try to draw a line between minimally and non-intelligent computational systems, both biological and artificial. I'll try to bring attention to the complexities of the tasks we often think of as simple or non-intelligent, and finally, I'll provide a brief discussion of a much more complex intelligence, that of human-level intelligence. For this first video, let's talk about the minimum qualities required for something to be intelligent. Here, I'll try to draw the boundary between a simple organism that executes a non-changing algorithm and a more complex system which learns and adapts to its environment in real time. There are three key features of intelligence scientists look for. Adaptability, generalization, and effectiveness. The first of these features, adaptability, simply refers to a system's ability to learn. If the system is failing, it needs to modify something until it works, and it needs to do so in a non-random manner, converging on a working solution. The system needs to have some sort of reward feedback to understand when an attempt goes better or worse than before, so that the system knows it's getting closer or further from a solution. For example, when a baby is first learning speech, it will confuse cats with dogs since they look very similar, but eventually, as it receives positive feedback from adults, when it gets the correct label, the baby will learn to tell a cat from a dog as well as any mature human. The second feature scientists look for, generalizability, means that the system should be able to extrapolate the underlying rule it has learned once it is successful, so that it can apply the rule to data or problems which it has not necessarily encountered yet. It would not be very useful if you had to relearn how to climb the stairs every time you came across a new set of steps, and a system which could not generalize its learning in this way is not behaving intelligently. Going back to our example of learning language, we can see that the child only needed a few tens or hundreds of examples of cats and dogs to be able to learn to distinguish between the over 500 million cats and dogs in the world today. If the child did not learn to generalize, it would only be able to label the few tens of cats and dogs it had met, and would be completely stumped every time it saw a new member of the same species. The extreme of generalization is one-shot learning where we can learn a new rule from a single example and immediately apply the rule to novel stimuli. We usually exhibit this behavior only after we have built up a considerable understanding of our world. The final feature of intelligence we'll look at is effectiveness. This is perhaps the simplest of the three, as it only states that the system or action must eventually be able to complete the task it is performing. Now, there are some subtleties in this last quality, in that the task should be physically achievable using the system's available resources. Otherwise, for example, we could give humans the task of achieving time travel, and when we fail, we would conclude that we're not an intelligent species, which clearly is not the case. Now that we've covered these three key features of intelligence, adaptability, generalization, and effectiveness, in the next video, we'll take a look at how natural selection encourages these qualities in simple nervous systems.